Hello and welcome to Edison TV. Today I'm joined by Greg Smith, CEO of IP Group. IP Group is a leading investor in breakthrough science and innovation companies with the potential to create a better future. The company is the most active UK-based early, early, early stage science investor, developing and supporting some of the world's most exciting businesses um, in deep tech, in life sciences and in clean tech. Uh, the company has got a strong track record of success, having invested in some high profile companies, including Oxford Nanopore, Ceres Power and First Light Fusion, who we interviewed recently. The company is listed on the London Stock Exchange, is capitalised at around £560 million, and that's around a 57% discount to uh, its year end 2022 net asset value. Greg, many thanks for coming in again. Good to see you. So, Greg, when, when you last came in, uh, we were talking about the more turbulent times and, and things haven't got any less turbulent. We just uh, had the Silicon Valley Bank situation this week. Can you summarise, uh, I guess, how your strategy is set out in, 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 in the current market environment and how things have changed? Yes, I guess strategy is a bit around, um, first of all, thinking about what's the long term purpose of the business and using that as your guiding light in, in current environment. Um, and having a, having a strong purpose, as you mentioned, is something that's really core to IP Group. Um, and then we want to make sure that we've got all the building blocks in place to deliver against that and then have a coherent strategy, which is the sort of the actions you're going to take to try and get there. And I think it's really that latter bit that changes with the environment. And when I, when I came to spoke, speak to you um, back in June last year, I talked about two, two focus areas for me as chief exec, and that was around performance and people. So on the performance side, the thing that we've been trying to get across in this set of results is it's around value creation. So what have we done differently in the current environment? The first thing was relatively early in the year last year, we, we spotted the, the signs that the market was looking a bit trickier than it had been for the last couple of years. So we reduced our investment spend. We also did a private placement of debt. So that was sort of important. The second thing is we continue to identify those companies that are going to move the dial as, in terms of shareholder value creation and we made sure that they were well financed and that we had the capital to support them through their key milestones. And then the, the third thing that we did was to make sure that we had um, sort of access to third party capital. And so we've been growing that out um, over the course of the, the last year. Um, and finally, which is very important for us as a listed business, we ensured that we maintained our sustainable approach to um, shareholder returns. And so we continue to pay our dividend. And that was using about half of the realizations that we made uh, during 2022. Great. And um, you wrote in the Times recently how um, the UK is on a pathway to becoming a, a science superpower. Um, can you discuss that and also the role that IB Group might play in, in creating this, this nascent superpower? Yes. Yeah, so so I, I believe that Britain can become a science superpower if the conditions are put in place for that to come to pass. And I think the conditions are threefold. The first is long-term capital being able to operate and invest in a long-term way, and that's incumbent on me as, as, as a member of the investment community and others in the space. I think the second is around having a supportive infrastructure for innovation. That's things like the UK being part of um, Horizon Europe, which is a, a research um, uh, consortium. It's about R&D tax credits being fit for purpose, and it's around talent the talent that you really desperately need to be able to, to move around and come in and out of the UK. And so uh, that's, that's where we're sort of asking and trying to, to get sort of government and regulatory support. And I think the third area is really it's sort of incumbent on us as a nation to back our innovation as consumers. So that's the public sector and the private sector to buy the products, the innovative products and services. And I think all of those ingredients will give the nation, the confidence, the confidence sort of running through our veins that this will be um, a science superpower as, as a nation. Great. And then turning a little bit more to the sort of financial side of things, um, can you discuss your, your current liquidity position and then also how that flows through to the portfolio of companies that you, that, that, that you own? Yeah, so this is a really topical question. Um, and I've been saying to shareholders for the last year and a half or so in this environment, Having capital is really a strategic asset and we have taken steps to ensure that that continues to be the case. So we're, 
We're very proud of the fact that we've got um, long-term providers of capital, including Phoenix Group, who um, uh, we did a private placement of debt this year. That means that we have about 250 million of cash on balance sheet at year end. We have a further 60 million of debt that we can draw, so there's about 300 million. And then if you take into account some of our listed holdings, then there's about half a billion of liquidity that we've got access to um, at the Topco level. So that's a really strong position both to support our existing companies to get through their value creation milestones, but also to be available opportunistically for things that, that the environment might throw up. Um, at the portfolio company level, um, I would say the top 20 companies are generally very well financed. Um, five or six of them actually are financed through to break even, which is um, you know, sort of a sign of maturity of our business. Um, and the vast majority are funded through at least into 2024 and well beyond their milestone. So we're feeling quite confident about the, the liquidity profile, both at Topco and at the portfolio level. That's great. And then moving on to the valuations, um, we discussed this a little bit last time and now it's a more turbulent environment. How confident are you in the valuations of your portfolio as they are on your, uh, on your books right now? So having just completed um, the very extensive audit process you have to go through as a, as a FTSE 250, um, and amazingly KPMG look at 93% of our portfolio by value, which is quite amazing. Um, we disclose um, the stats in our results presentation that, that I'd encourage people to, to go and have a look at, but about 25% of our NAV is in cash and listed assets. A further about 20% is in companies that have had financings in the last 12 months. A further 35% we've had separately independently valued that's then been reviewed by KPMG and that leaves about 19% which is things that have been valued internally, the older funding rounds. So actually we feel very, very confident. Um, and if anybody's really interested in this subject, we have a deep dive valuation webinar uh, next Thursday, the 23rd of March. So I'd encourage everyone to sign up and you can join that through the um, Investment Company platform. Interesting. So you're at a discount to NAV and a lot of your NAV is also held, well, backed up by cash as well. Uh, interesting times. Um, and then I'm just looking forward in terms of, you know, I guess the next 12 to 24 months, you know, what are the key catalysts amongst your portfolio and for the business in general that investors should, should look towards? So I'll, I'll come back to the, the three areas that we focus on. So we look for um, companies that contribute to a healthier future, those that contribute to a tech enriched future and those that contribute to a regenerative future. And each of those has got a really neatly defined um, investment outlook for the next three years. On the life sciences side, the healthier future, there are eight companies in our portfolio that are, that are gonna hit clinical milestones in the next 12 to 24 months. Um, one of them, Mission Therapeutics, has already um, had positive safety data. And so we're obviously looking at the commercial implications of that now. So that's a quite a well-defined, nicely diversified portfolio across sort of oncology and inflammation. So quite, quite a nice uh, profile. Then on the tech enriched future, we have um, again set out in the presentation a number of businesses where really the key value driver is around growing revenues. And the top three companies, Feature Space, SaltPay and Garrison, all growing at double digit um, revenue. And we expect them to continue to do that during the course of the coming year and beyond. And so that's clearly the key value creation there. And then in our sort of um, area of the business, regenerative future, clean tech, which is our Kiko platform. And we have a couple of mature businesses. So First Light's in there. We spoke about First Light last time. And they're currently looking to do um, a funding round to take them through the next stage of development, getting net gain. Um, and we have another couple of businesses, Oxbotica, who have just completed a funding round, and then Hisata, which is an Australian business, um, and they're looking to get to the next stage of scale up on their, um, their, their highly efficient hydrogen electrolyzer business. And while we're on the subject of Australia, I'll put a little plug out for our um, eVTOL, our electric flying car vehicle. Um, they, uh, just in the last couple of weeks, managed to get um, first takeoff, um, and so there's some videos on our socials, um, but that's a tiny part, less than a penny per share, uh, but genuinely um, things that are changing the world uh, for the better. So they're the, they're the milestones to watch. So lots of things going on over the next, uh, next 12 to 24 months. Greg, uh, many thanks for coming in today. Great to speak to you again. And uh, yeah, it doesn't look as if a lot of the future is priced in right now, does it? Correct. I think, um, I think now is a great time for people to, to look at IP Group with the, the confidence of having gone through this really rigorous process. And I think if you want confidence in the sort of the fundability of the business, um, I think one thing that maybe investors haven't um, picked up on is the, 
the third party assets under management. We're up to about 700 million under management now, which gives us a bit of fee income, but also diversifies the, um, the pool of capital available for our companies to develop and grow. So yeah, we think that's a, a really interesting time. And uh, my CFO and I and our chairman just bought some shares uh, uh, yesterday. So we believe in it too. Backing it up with your own cash. Greg, thanks very much. Thanks a lot.